Okay, so today is going to be great because we're going to do a numerical calculation. Maybe you've done this before, maybe you haven't, but I'm going to step you through it. Okay, so let me propose the situation and then we'll talk about how to solve the situation. So suppose I have a ball that's shot up with some initial velocity vector v0 and it travels through the air and I want to find out the, where this ball is at different times. I want to find everything is there is to know about this ball. And in this case, there is uh, a, an acceleration. So let me start off with these two definitions. The first is we define the average velocity as the change in position over the change in time. It's the rate that the position changes. Uh, and if you take the limit as delta t goes to zero, this becomes a derivative, but we don't need to do that at this point. The other definition is acceleration, also a vector it tells me how the velocity changes. So velocity tells me how position changes, acceleration tells me how velocity changes. So again, this could be like the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, but it's a vector, right? I can take a vector change and divide by a scalar change in time and I get another vector. Okay, so in this case, I have a constant acceleration of negative 9.8 in the y direction. So this is my, my gravitational acceleration, zero, negative 9.8, zero meters per second squared. Okay, so it's not going to just move at a constant velocity. It's going to change velocity and change position. We want to find out where it is. You can solve this problem analytically. You can get an equation for this. Actually, I'll go ahead and tell you the equation. R as a function of t equals R0 plus V0 t plus one half g vector. That's a vector t squared, assuming that this starts at t equals zero. And I'll derive this equation for you in another video, okay? But we can get an algebraic expression. I don't even need to know what the initial velocities are. I can just I can just solve the situation. But there's a lot of cases where you can't do, you can't get an equation, or it might be super difficult. In that case, we will use a numerical calculation. So the idea is to break this problem into small time steps. And during each step, assume that the acceler that the velocity is constant, which is not. Okay, but if the time step is small enough, then that is true, uh, approximately true. But I can make a whole bunch of short problems, and then put it all together. So instead of doing one calculation for the whole thing, I could break this into let's say a hundred steps, and then during each of those steps, do a little bit easier calculation, but just do more steps. So here's how we're going to do this. Let me take this equation right here. I'm going to say v average is r2 minus r1 over delta t. So this is the average velocity between positions 1 and 2. So let's say that's 1 and 2. I, it could do with any two uh, steps. It doesn't really matter. Now I multiply both sides by delta t and I get uh, r2 minus r1 equals v average delta t. Now I can solve for R2. R2 equals R1 plus V average delta T. So during that time interval, the velocity is changing, okay? But what if I just say, maybe it's not? So instead of, what if I say, I'm gonna use the velocity uh, at some point too? Okay, so I'm going to say at the end of this time interval, which I need to calculate, I can say R2 equals R1 plus V2 delta T. So that's not true, okay? But it's not 100% wrong either. So now if I go over here and do the same thing with the acceleration, I can say the acceleration is V2 minus V1 over delta T. So if I solve that the same way as it did over here, I get V2 vector equals v1 vector plus a whatever it may be delta t. If the acceleration is constant, this is true. If the acceleration is not constant, it's approximately true. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go from 0 to 1 and I'm going to calculate the new velocity uh, at the end of that time interval which would be 1 using this equation. And then I'm going to calculate the new position, 0 to 1, using the velocity, actually 1, right? The velocity that I just calculated. And then I will do it again. Then I'll do it for the steps going from 1 to 2, just like you see here. And then, so I'll go 0 to 1, 
and then I go one to two, and then I go two to three, and then I go three to four, and then do I keep needing to, you get the idea. You keep doing that forever. Now, so the question is, how big is your delta t? Let's start off with something like delta t equals 0 0.1 seconds. That's small. And let's start off with t equals 0. So I need to do all these calculations. And I'm going to do it first by hand, and then we'll do it with a computer. And then we can compare it to that. So I actually made out a little chart here. I'm starting off with initial velocity of 3.5 meters per second in the x direction, 4.8 meters per second in the y direction, and 0 in the z direction at position 0, 0, 0. So here's my first interval. I'm starting at step 0. That's time 0, velocity 0, position 0. Now for time 1, how do I find the next time? Well, it's going to be 0, 0 0.0 plus 0 0.1 is equal to 0 0.1. I increased it by delta t. Now how do I find this velocity? Let me just write it off to the side here. So I can say v1 equals v0 plus a delta t. So that's going to be v1 equals 3.54.80 plus the vector 0, negative 9.8, 0 times I messed this up. I ran out of room. Times 0 0.1. Okay, so I'm going to just do the x component first. So that's going to be, I'm going to use my actual calculator. Turn on my calculator. Turn it in. So I have the x components can be 3.5, enter. And then 0 times 0 0.1 is 0. So 3.5 plus 0 is 3.5. Okay, now I need to do the y component. So it's going to be drop. It's going to be 4.8, enter. Now I need negative 9.8 times 0.1. So I can do that in my head. Okay, that's going to be uh, 0.98 negative. Now I need to add that to that, plus. And I get 3.82. That's right. And then I have uh, 0 plus 0 is 0. So the velocity did change, uh, but we're going to use this velocity to calculate the position. So I'm going to calculate over here r1 is equal to r0 plus uh, v1 times delta t, which I just used, just calculated this right here. So that's going to be equal to uh, r1 is equal to 0, 0, 0 plus this velocity, 3.5. 3.820 times 0 0.01. So let's do that. The x components first. So this one's pretty easy because they're all added to 0 the first time. So it's going to be 3.5 times 0 0.1. That's that 0 0.1, not 0 0.1. So I don't even need to write this down. So I can do this in my head. So it's going to be uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.382, 0. Now I'm going to do it for step 2. Okay, so the next time is going to be I need to add 0.1 to this, so it's going to be 0 0.2 seconds. Now to calculate the new velocity, I'm going to take this velocity plus the acceleration times dt. So I'm not even going to write it out; I'm just going to do it. Okay, we're all we're all grown-ups here, right? Um, so it's going to be 3.5 is the x velocity plus 0 times delta t, so it's just still 3.5. The y velocity is going to be 3.82, enter, and then again I'm going to have this negative 0.98, which is negative 9.8 times 0.1. So it's going to be 0.98 change sign plus, and I get 2.840. Now for the next position, um, I'm going to take this position plus v times dt, this velocity. So now I do have to do a little bit more work. Okay. So let's do it in our head. We're going to get 0 0.35, 0 0.35, enter. And then I have 3.5. Why well, I, I can do that one. That's going to be 0 0.35, right? Because that's this times 0 0.1 and add it to that. And I get 0 0.7. Then the next one I get 0 0.382. And then this is 2.84 times 0 0.1. This is going to be 0 0.284. So enter 0 0.284 plus I get 
six, 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 zero. Okay. Now, if I you noticed a couple things. One, the uh, x velocity is constant. That's fine. Two, what's happening to the y position? It's moving up, right? That's what we'd expect. It's moving up. Eventually, though, this velocity will start, this velocity is decreasing. So eventually the velocity is going to be negative. And in that case, this will start to move down. And then it will eventually get back down to y equals zero. So I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of steps in order to get this to zero. And I don't want to do it. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. You can't make me do it. I don't want to do it. So I'm not going to. Okay. In fact, because I don't want to do this all day. Instead, I'm going to do this in Python with a program. So we're going to write a computer program to do this. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to, my computer's over there. Just come on over here. Follow me over here. Come on. Let's go do it. I'll meet you over at my computer. I'll see you over there. Aren't you coming? It's over here. Let's see. Okay, here we are. Thank you for coming over to my computer. That wasn't so far. So we are going to do some cool stuff here. Let me go ahead and introduce you to uh, one of my favorite places to do numerical calculations, and that's in Python. Python with GlowScript 2.9 v Python, and I'm using Trinket.io. So I will include a link to this program down below. This is a Python that runs in your browser. It even runs on your phone, so you don't have to install anything. Okay, um, and and you can log in with your Google account and all that stuff. So let's just put my first projectile motion, because that's what this is, and then save it. Because then we can rerun it. We don't have to save our code and stuff like that. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, now this is Python. So if you haven't done a computer program before, it's not a big deal. Don't panic. Calm down. It's gonna be good. Let me just show you uh, some really quick thing. So first I can say print one. And then in this particular implementation, we have our coding over here and an output over there. So if I click run, it will run that and it prints one. It did exactly what I told it to do. That was pretty cool. Now I can say x equals one print x. See, I could even do uh, print x plus x. Cool. Wait, it gets better v equals vector uh what did i say my vector 3.5 zero. print v okay so here you see one of the many very awesome things about glow script python if you just use python okay it's not going to do this but if you use glow script v python it has a built-in vector class. Vectors are already there, and you can do vector operations. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Wait, watch this. I'm, and we're not going to use all these vector things today, but let's just say v dot x. I can just look at the x component of a vector. v dot x is the x component of v. Okay, what if I change this to capital V and I run it? Then something bad happens. V is not defined. Python is case sensitive. So capital V and lowercase v are not the same thing. I could call this Bob, right? Bob.x. You can call things whatever you want. Well, no. Okay. Not whatever you want. There are some things you can't use. Okay. Oops. Okay. So let's see what else. Oh, what about this? Let's go back to V because, I mean, that's just, that's just weird calling it Bob. What about this? Print V plus one. What if I do that? Oh. You can't add a scalar and a vector. Right, you can't add a scalar and a vector. Python won't let me do the impossible, so that's cool. What about v plus v? I can do that. Okay, why? I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but I did it. Uh, and then finally, one more thing. v times 0.1. Yes, you can multiply a vector and a scalar. So we can treat variables in here as vectors and do a whole bunch of cool stuff. And that's what we're going to do. So let, let me start off. Oops, I don't need to delete that. I do need to do, we're going to do exactly what I did in that paper. We're going to say uh, A, let's call it, hmm, let's call it G equals vector 0, negative 9.8, 0. One thing, uh, two things. Number one, in physics, we say G is the gravitational field. It, it happens to be the acceleration in this case. We never, we don't say negative G when we're talking about a vector. The vector G has a negative Y component. Number two, there are no units. Okay, 
Python is dealing with numbers. It cares about numbers. The units are your job. You're the human, you keep track of units. They are important, but that's your job. Okay, so I'm trying to think, what else do we have? Oh, when you had the initial position, so I can say r equals vector zero, zero, zero. And then I'm gonna say t equals zero. And let's do dt equals 0 0.1. Okay, now let's, I'm just gonna write out the calculations. So watch this. Um, let's, I already know the initial stuff. So I'm gonna say uh, v equals v plus g times dt print I'm going to even write it like this, v1 equals v. And I'm going to put the units in here because I'm, I, I like that. So the, the, in GlowScript, we have this really nice print statement where you can put uh, things in quotes into string, comma, and it just prints everything together. So let's run this. See? And that, that's what we had, right? And then I could do uh, r equals r plus v times dt. Oh times v times dt print r1 equals, we're just checking here. I'm just checking to get out the same thing. r meters, and then, uh, yeah, that was it. That's the same thing we got. Let's do one more. Let me just copy all this. Copy. I'm gonna show you something. Uh, print it, and then let's change these all to two. These, these don't actually matter. But now I can run it again. Check that out. So you see, I'm getting the same answer. It's working. But you'll notice in right here, you may say, wait, what the heck? What the heck is going on? Because that has V equals V plus G times DT. Shouldn't the Vs cancel? I can subtract V from both sides. Absolutely correct. Except this is not an algebraic equal sign. This is a make equal to sign, which is super awesome because now I don't have to have V1, V2, V3, V4. I just have V and I update V. So this says, literally this says, take DT, multiply it by the vector G, take the value for the vector value for V and add those two together and then make that equal to the variable V. So this is a make equal to sign. So I don't need a whole bunch of variables. I just need to one V and I can update it. And then I could just keep doing this forever and ever and ever and ever. And it'd still be easier than doing it on paper, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, let's do this. Let's say while T less than one. And all I'm gonna do is say, I'm gonna print T, T equals T. I'm gonna do it the right way, right? I'm gonna write everything out. And then T equals T plus DT. So this line, this loop, to do loops, oops, to do loops in Python, we can do something like while, some expression, colon, and then everything that's indented is part of that loop. And then it, once we dedent, undent, we can say print, oh, I don't know what I'm doing with my typing, print, finished. Okay, now I'm gonna run this. Oh, T equals T plus D, oh, I'm messing up. T plus, so this line right here in 11, updates the time until it gets to a time of one. And it's gonna print them all out. Let's see what happens. So this says t equals zero, 1.1.2.3.4.5, 1 .1 done. And then it finished. So things are working. So we're instead of just doing the time and printing the time, boring, we're gonna do our calculations. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just like I did in the table, was to find the new velocity. So I'm gonna say v equals v plus g times dt. And I already showed you how that works. Now I'm gonna update the position. R equals R plus V times DT. So here you see, I updated the velocity. So this, in this line right here, this V is actually the second V. It's actually V2, right? Because I just updated V. If I did it the order backwards, then this would be V1. Uh, and you can play around with that and you should, but I'm gonna show you this way for right now. Uh, now let's do this. Let's print uh, R equals r meters i'm just printing the r i could do the v's too so you'll see here that like i said r is increasing until it starts right here it starts decreasing and then eventually it gets to below zero so i would want to stop right here i could stop after before one second uh i could actually do this i want to stop when r the y value is less than zero so while r dot y is greater than or equal to zero. I have to do greater than or equal to because it starts off at zero, right? And so if I just did greater than, it would it would not work. So let's do this now again. 
there. Now it, it got down below y equals zero and then it stopped. Okay, but we're done. Let's just print out everything. Let's print out uh, the position, the velocity to so print uh, v equals v meters per second and print t equals t seconds. So here I have all my data. I have all that a table filled out, a whole bunch of stuff. And that's cool. Uh, but this is, it took 0.8 seconds to travel. It went 3.15 meters in the x direction. It got back down to zero. Uh, here's the final velocity, everything. Okay, but it's not the best calculation. In fact, this time step is a little big for that. I want it to actually be smaller, but what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a whole bunch of values here and no one wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that stuff. So let's just print out this, let's just print this out at the end. I'm gonna cut this out and print it out down here. And now you see these need to be back tabbed. And now I can go up here and make a smaller time interval and you can see we'll get a better answer. Okay, there you go. That's pretty cool. That everything, look how small this is. It just barely got below the, the y equals zero, but it still printed that out. Okay, now let's do one more thing. I'm gonna go up here and make it look pretty. T graph equals graph. X title equals time seconds. Y title equals position, a uh, Y position. I guess Y position, meters. This is another great thing about GlowScript v Python is it has built in graphing. So now that makes a graph, but it doesn't really print anything. If I run it, I don't really get anything new. Okay, because I didn't plot anything. So I want to also make a function to make, that just makes the outer borders of the graph. So now I can say F1, oops, F1 equals G curve. Okay, so G curve is a built-in function in GlowScript. And I'll show you where to find all those details out later. But once I've made that, now let me run it. Still nothing happened. Okay, because I didn't add any data to this. What I need to do is down here, I want to actually plot a data point. So I'm gonna say f1.plot. And you could call this f1, is just, I always call it function one. You could call it, again, Bob. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and I don't have anything for or against Bobs. I'm just using that as a name. Uh, so I wanna plot the x coordinate, the horizontal and the vertical coordinate. So it's gonna be time. And then I wanna plot y. So the y position is gonna be r.y. Now if I run it, check that out. I mean, come on. You gotta admit that's awesome. I can, I can look. What I don't even know what else to say. It's so awesome. It's just so awesome. Okay. Uh, up here, one of the things I always do is I come up here and there you can add a whole bunch of parameters. But I'm gonna make the the line blue. I like to make blue lines, and I don't know why. It's always make blue. Then it's really cool. Okay. Uh, let's plot the y velocity. How about that? So I don't need to change the title, but I will uh, because this is already getting to be a long video. So. Uh, y velocity. You cannot plot the position. Okay. You cannot plot the velocity because those are vector values. You can only plot single scalar values. If I plot, try to plot a ve vector, it's like, what the heck are you doing? It can't do that. Now down here, I'm going to plot v dot y. There you go. It's decreasing in the vertical velocity as a function of time. Uh, let's go back up here and plot our position. I want to show you one more thing. I forgot to show you before. And I want to change this because I don't want it to look bad. Position, meters, and run it. Let's make sure it works. Okay, so that's working. But now what happens if I change the time interval to a smaller value, 0.1? You can see the jaggedness in the graph because it's only calculating the position every so often, but it still actually gives a pretty good value. It does a pretty nice job. And this is the great thing about numerical calculations is that we can always fix our problems by making smaller time intervals. So if I make this, the time interval, it's gonna work better, but it's gonna take longer to run. And you can get out of control crazy small and you don't wanna do that because it will make things bad. And I don't really gain anything, but I do get a better calculation by making a smaller time interval. So even in more complicated situations, we can still do this. And in fact, we are going to do this for cases that don't even have constant acceleration. But this 
is your first introduction to numerical calculations because we get a we put in numbers and we get out numbers this is a parabola looks like it but we don't actually get that okay um, so I'll stop there I'll include this code down below and I am going to show you another video about how to find the analytical solution to the same problem I'll talk to you guys later